I, 23F, got engaged a few months ago to my fiancé, 21M. We're over the moon, but my dad refused to give his blessing, and now he's not only boycotting my wedding, but also cutting off all contact with me. The worst part? He's taking his whole side of the family with him. I'm starting to wonder if I'm the bad guy here. Let me explain. I've never been super close with my dad. My parents divorced when I was a baby, and I barely remember them being together. My mom remarried when I was four, and my stepdad has been a solid father figure ever since. My mom had 80% custody, so I grew up mostly with her, my stepdad, and my brother. We all got along great. As for my dad, we had a decent relationship, but it wasn't deep. He lived two minutes away from my mom's house, and I saw him once a week and every other weekend. When I turned 18, I stopped visiting as much, but we'd still have dinner together occasionally, maybe once or twice a month. The issue? My fiancé, let's call him Arch, and I started dating when I was 22 and he was 20. We met at a youth group and quickly became best friends. I know it seems fast to some, but when you know, you know. I can't imagine my life without him. Before proposing, Arch wanted to ask for blessings from both my mom and stepdad, as well as my dad. My mom and stepdad were thrilled and gave their blessings immediately. My dad, however, wasn't as cooperative. He dodged Arch for weeks, despite being retired and having plenty of free time. When they finally met, my dad came prepared with two printed letters, one for Arch and one for me stating that he would not give his blessing. He didn't even let Arch ask the question before handing over the letters. He also scoffed at the fact that Arch asked for my stepdad's blessing, calling it ridiculous. Arch defended my stepdad, but the damage was done. He came home upset, and after some prying, he told me what happened. I was hurt and felt disrespected especially with how he dismissed my stepdad's role in my life. After cooling off for a few days, I met my dad at a park to talk things out. It didn't go well. My dad told me he wasn't coming to the wedding, and neither was his side of the family. I asked him directly, if I get engaged, you won't come to the wedding? He flat out said no. I then asked, if I go through with this, are you saying you want nothing to do with me? His response? No sweat off my back. That's when I lost my composure. I was holding it together until that point, but his indifference hurt me deeply. He insisted we needed to wait two more years to get engaged, and maybe then he'd reconsider. He ended the conversation by saying he wouldn't pay for the wedding or be involved in any way. A few days later, Arch proposed. It was perfect our families, minus my dad and his fiance, were there, and it was a magical night. We posted about it on social media, and while we were showered with congratulations from friends and family, there was complete radio silence from my dad's side. I started second-guessing myself. Maybe I had been too hasty? Maybe I was in the wrong? So, I reached out to him. I texted a heartfelt message, telling him I wanted him at my wedding, that he's my dad, and I wanted him to walk me down the aisle. His response? He asked for my email. Confused, I gave it to him. A few hours later, I received a long, emotionally charged email. He accused me of disrespecting him and ruining what should have been a special time between a father and daughter. He said Arch and I were responsible for the destruction of our relationship and that it would take enormous effort to repair things. His final words were, but you got exactly what you wanted. My mom, stepdad, and Arch's family are all supporting us. My mom and stepdad have offered to pay for the wedding since my dad backed out. Wedding planning has been fun, but this whole situation has me questioning whether I really am in the wrong. So Reddit, AITA for moving forward with my engagement and wedding plans despite my dad not giving his blessing? Edit. Editing because there has been a few comments regarding this. Money is not an issue for him or his side of the family. So the waiting two years has nothing to do with saving, and he is not trying to get out of paying for the wedding. He is retired and has been for quite some time. Edit number two. I can't reply to all the comments mentioning this, so I will write it here. I wanted my fiancé to ask my parents out of respect, I guess. I always thought it was a sweet gesture, but we viewed it as a way to include them in this next stage of life, rather than viewing it as asking permission for him to marry me. I'm not sure how to properly articulate it, though, sorry. And as for my mom and his relationship... They were always very civil and I'd go as far as to say they were friends my whole life. There was never any fights, in front of me, and my brother at least. And my mom and stepdad would invite him and his fiancé to parties we would have. I'm not 100% sure the reason for their divorce, though I can speculate. It just wasn't something we talked about. And I will add that they chose the custody themselves and did not have a court battle as I've seen a few comments say. There was never a fight for custody. He chose to move out and live two minutes away. My mom did not want his money. That was also never a fight. She just wanted to spend Christmas with us and stay in the house. Smiley face. Relevant comments. 
Commenter 1. Info. Did your mother and father marry young? OP. Not super young, no. But they did marry pretty fast. However, my mom remarried her now husband after 11 months and they've been together since I was 4. I did bring this up to him during our long talk to see if that was his reasoning and he said it's not really about that. OP on if her father's fiancé might be the reason for the disagreement. OP. It's possible, but I'm not sure why. Her and I had a great relationship before all of this. Not super close, but always looked forward to seeing one another. I have not heard from her since any of this. OP on what the possible problem was that her father was not sharing with her? OP. I ask myself the same. I think part of it is that he asked my stepdad and mom for their blessings first. And I think he thinks we're too young. I have talked to my fiancé, my mom, his parents, and some people in our lives who would be considered mentors to us. We do couples counseling to ensure we are making the right decisions, and it helps us to have a healthy marriage and relationship. Has OP been that closer to her father? OP. Well, yes we are not close, but I have always respected and valued him as my father. So I've always wanted him and my stepdad to walk me down the aisle and have a father-daughter dance with both of them. I am more confused with his response to all of this. Update 1. This whole thing went down about 4 months ago, and I hadn't spoken to my dad since until a few days ago. He texted me, which I didn't notice right away since I've had his notification silenced. When I finally saw it, I was walking out of work and literally dropped everything RIP to my Celsius and the lip liner that rolled out of my bag. You will be missed. His message read, I am texting you because we need to have a conversation. I debated whether to even respond, but my peace of mind, and let's be honest, my anxiety, got the better of me. I texted back, I'm open to having a conversation with the intention of moving forward, not rehashing the past. We scheduled a call for the next day. Fast forward to the call. He starts by saying he loves me and that hasn't changed. Then, almost immediately, he switches to how upset and disappointed he is that he had to reach out first. Um, what? He then asked if we've set a wedding date. I told him it's late next year, hoping maybe he changed his mind. But no. He followed that up with, do you have a venue? I said yes. His response? So, this is happening. Well, I'm not telling anyone in the family not to go. That's their choice. There aren't sides. I tried to explain that there are sides because no one in the family knows my side of things. I'm not super close with that side of the family, except for my grandma, who made it clear she's on his side. He cut me off, saying he didn't want to be on the phone long, and that's all he had to say. I asked if I could ask a question before he hung up, and he agreed. So I asked, do you stand by your decision not to come? His answer, it depends on how I'm treated. At this point, I'm floored. I asked him to elaborate because I've never been disrespectful to him. And then it all came out. He feels like he deserves the title of father of the bride and thinks it's completely disrespectful to him if I let both him and my stepdad walk me down the aisle. He went on to double down and say that my stepdad should never have been asked because it wasn't his blessing to give and he's my biological father. He would only consider coming to the wedding if he's treated with the respect he deserves by having the sole title of father of the bride. And then, the kicker. He told me that my mom needed to call him to talk about all of this. Um, okay. Well, my mom is having none of that. She's refusing to call him rightfully so and is protecting her peace, as she should. If he wants to talk to her, he can pick up the phone and let her know that himself. I'm still reeling. Originally, I was fully planning on sending him an invite, but now, I don't even know what to say. The whole thing feels so messed up. My fiancé's parents are upset, and so are my mom and stepdad. I'm honestly at a loss. I didn't expect to be giving an update this soon or at all. But here we are. I haven't spoken to him since that call, and am thinking about writing a letter to him. I want to take a few days to calm down first, though, before I decide anything. If I do send something, I'll update again. For now, this is where things stand. Comments. Commenter 1. You have a narcissistic black hole for a bio father? I have one too. He will literally move the goalpost throughout your wedding planning to make sure you know how important he is. And if you don't comply one time, he's out. The trash took itself out. Don't drag it back in. It hurts to know that this isn't about you. It's all about him and his fragile ego. If people see your stepdad walking you, then they'll know what a shit father he really was. And I'm so sure he told everyone how involved he's been your whole life. Mine did the same. Commenter 2. You're entertaining this man too much. He is the same man who did not raise you. The same man who emotionally abuses you. The same man who is making one of the best moments in your life about him. If you continue to give him power, you will ruin this day for yourself and your fiancé. Take back control. Stop communicating about his place in your wedding and enjoy the wedding planning. 
Hopefully this is your one and only time getting married. So make it a joyful one. Update 2. After that phone call with my dad, I decided to sit on it for a few days like I mentioned before. I needed to let the emotions simmer down so I could actually think clearly. But life has this funny way of throwing curveballs at you when you're trying to take a breather. So, get this two days after our awkward, tension-filled phone call. My grandma, the one firmly in my dad's corner, shows up at my doorstep. Unannounced. She's holding a casserole dish because apparently all family interventions must involve food. And wearing her signature, I'm about to drop some wisdom expression. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my grandma. She's tough as nails and doesn't mince words. But I could already tell this wasn't going to be a heartwarming visit. She sits down at my kitchen table, casserole placed between us like some kind of peace offering or maybe a bribe? Hard to tell at this point. Without so much as a hello, she launches into a speech about family unity and doing the right thing. Translation. She wants me to cave and let my dad be the sole person to walk me down the aisle. Apparently, she and my dad had been talking, and he was really struggling with the fact that he had to share that moment with my stepdad. And then she hit me with, Sweetie, your father's just been through so much, and he deserves this moment. I couldn't help it I laughed. It was one of those weird, incredulous laughs where you're so taken aback by someone's audacity that your body just reacts. I told her, very calmly, considering the ridiculousness of the situation, that I've also been through a lot. That maybe, just maybe, this wedding isn't about what my dad deserves but what I want. She looked me dead in the eyes and said, Well, if that's how you feel, maybe you shouldn't be getting married at all. That hit like a ton of bricks. Suddenly, it felt like I was living in some kind of warped reality where everyone had lost their minds except me. I mean, come on who says that to their granddaughter? She left shortly after, casserole untouched. As soon as she was out the door, I called my fiancé and told him everything. He was, understandably, livid. But even as we vented about the absurdity of it all, a sinking feeling crept in. Was my wedding really going to be this battleground? Should I even keep trying with my dad at this point? Then because life wasn't done messing with me later that night, I got a group text. From my dad. To me and all his side of the family. It was a long-winded message about how family should support each other through difficult times. And how he's been deeply hurt by the decisions that have been made. But that he's willing to forgive me if I'm willing to reconsider my stance on who walks me down the aisle. He ended it by saying he still wasn't sure if he would attend the wedding. But that he remains hopeful we can come to an agreement. I just. I couldn't believe it. It felt like emotional manipulation on a grand scale, and now he was dragging the rest of the family into it. It was like he wanted to make it clear to everyone that he was the bigger person, offering to forgive me for. I don't even know what at this point. My stepdad, mom, and fiancé were all ready to stage an intervention to stop me from responding. But against my better judgment, because clearly, I still hadn't learned, I wrote back. It was short and to the point, Dad, this is my wedding. I love you and want you there but I'm not negotiating on this. The decision has been made. No one replied to the group chat after that. It was radio silence. Again. And here's where things get wild. Two days later, I get a wedding invite in the mail. Not mine, obviously. It's from my dad and his fiance. A surprise wedding invitation to their own wedding, happening in three months. They've apparently been planning this for a while, and they're getting married before me. The kicker? The wedding is at the exact same venue that my fiancé and I had booked for our wedding next year. I'm just sitting here, staring at this invitation, feeling like I'm in some kind of twisted soap opera. Was this petty revenge? Was he trying to one-up me? I honestly don't even know anymore. I haven't told anyone about the invite yet, not my mom, not my fiancé because, frankly, I don't know how to process this. But there it is, sitting on my counter like a ticking time bomb. So, Reddit, I'm at a complete loss. Should I go to his wedding? Should I even acknowledge this insanity? Right now, all I want to do is run off to some remote island with Arch and Elope. But I know that's not realistic. Still, the temptation is real. Update 3. So, after receiving the surprise wedding invitation to my dad's wedding, my venue no less I decided to take a step back and think about everything. I didn't tell my mom or my fiancé about the invite for a while because I just needed space to process. Every time I looked at that invitation, I felt like I was being sucked into some black hole of family dysfunction. But then, as fate would have it, my mom found the invite. I had left it on the counter in my kitchen, and while she was over helping me with some wedding stuff, she saw it. I'll never forget the look on her face her eyes went wide, and she just stood there, blinking at the invitation like it was some sort of bomb about to go off. Then she handed it to me and said, What the hell is this? That's when I knew I couldn't hide it anymore. 
So I spilled the beans. I told her everything how my dad had booked the same venue. How he hadn't told me about his wedding. How he basically threw down this emotional gauntlet, expecting me to choose between him and my stepdad. I could see the anger simmering beneath her calm expression. And, to be honest, seeing my mom so fiercely protective of me made me feel like maybe I wasn't the one losing it after all. We talked for hours, and at the end of it, I realized there was only one thing left to do. Confront my dad, face to face. It was time to stop hiding behind texts and emails and group messages. This situation had spiraled too far out of control for that. I called him the next day and told him we needed to meet. He seemed hesitant but agreed. We decided to meet at a coffee shop halfway between his place and mine. I went in with my heart pounding, unsure if this was going to end in another epic disaster or some kind of resolution, but I had to try. When I walked in, he was already there, sitting by the window. He looked tired, older. Maybe this whole mess had worn him down too. For a moment, I almost felt sorry for him, but then I remembered why we were here. I sat down across from him, and before he could say anything, I told him the truth. I laid it all out there how hurt I was by his behavior, how his obsession with being the father of the bride had turned what should have been the happiest time of my life into a nightmare. I told him how much I wanted him at my wedding, but not if it meant sacrificing the relationship I had with my stepdad, a man who had been there for me when he wasn't. I even brought up the venue thing, asking him flat out if it was some kind of power play. He sat there in silence for a while. I could tell he was struggling with what to say. Finally, he took a deep breath and said, I didn't mean for things to get this out of hand. What followed was a strange, almost surreal conversation. My dad admitted that a lot of his behavior stemmed from feeling replaced not just by my stepdad, but by the whole life I had built without him. He felt like he had missed out on so much of my childhood, and now he was afraid of losing me for good. The wedding had become this symbol to him of everything he wasn't part of, and in a twisted way, he thought asserting his role would somehow fix that. I told him that if he wanted to be part of my life, there was still time to rebuild our relationship, but only if he was willing to let go of the ego and the control. He needed to understand that this wedding wasn't about him. It was about me, Arch, and the future we were building together. We sat there for what felt like hours, hashing things out. It wasn't easy. I won't lie to you. Reddit there were tears, awkward silences, and some hard truths said on both sides. But in the end, my dad agreed to drop the whole, sole father of the bride, nonsense. He said he didn't want to lose me, and if that meant sharing the role with my stepdad, he'd do it. He also promised to cancel the venue for his wedding and find somewhere else, though he swore it wasn't meant as some kind of revenge, just bad planning. And here's the wildest part. A few days after our talk, my dad called me. He said he'd been thinking about everything and that he wanted to be a part of the wedding, even if he had to share the spotlight. But he had one last request. He asked if we could have a small moment together before the ceremony a private father-daughter moment. It was just the two of us. No stepdad, no fiancé, no drama. I agreed, and honestly, it felt like a step in the right direction. So where does that leave us? Well, for now, things are okay. Not perfect, but okay. My dad's still not my best friend, and I'm still not entirely sure where we stand long term, but I feel like we've at least called a truce. He's going to walk me down the aisle alongside my stepdad. I'm going to do my best to keep my focus on the wedding itself and the life I'm building with Arch. The wedding is in a few months, and I've decided to let go of all the negativity surrounding it. My dad and I have a long road ahead if we're ever going to truly repair our relationship, but for now, I'm just glad we've stopped the bleeding. Oh, and in case you were wondering, my grandma eventually came around. She apologized for her little intervention and brought me another casserole a piece casserole, if you will. As for the wedding, it's going to be beautiful, chaotic, and perfectly imperfect. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way.